and Joe, uh, great to be here. Um, I'm from the other side of the planet. So if you're wondering why do I have an accent, it's actually not, um, I'm, I live in Australia, so I live in Melbourne, but my accent is like probably a mix of Hungarian. So I'm originally from Hungary. That's why I know about, I think where uh, Albania is and what, what the capital of Albania is. Um, but yeah, I've been in Australia for over 15 years now, and I've been actually, uh, I think I, I'm not as uh, experienced then as AbLab. So I, in 2015, I've heard about uh, crypto, but I, I didn't invest. So I, I, I had very limited experience back then. I started to work a little bit more um, on it in 2017. And uh, pretty much I, I used the lockdown to get full in uh, into crypto. So when, when the whole lockdown started in 2020, uh, I did a lot more. Uh, so pretty much not just started, but also started to share my experience as well. So today it's, it's a quite generic uh, presentation. It's not specifically on Metaverse or not specifically on DAOs. I, I gave a little bit of a clickbait title. The, I think the 10 ways to make gains in the crypto world. So uh, I will start with that and just let me ch share, let me, let me share my screen. I think this should work now. All righty. 10 ways to make gains in the crypto world. So what's behind this, um, uh, this kit, little bit of a catchphrase title, 10 ways, 10 ways, why exactly 10 ways? Uh, these are 10 ways that I came up with. So it's not something that uh, I read somewhere. I just thought it would sound good and try to think of what are the ways you can make gains in crypto world. Because as much as I like to say that I'm in it for the technology, I think most of the people, 99.9%, .9%, they want to get you know, some, some money, some financial gains out of it as well. And while I think that the use of blockchain cryptocurrencies is really part of the like it, 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 and web3 metaverse they are all part of a technology revolution that you cannot just stop with bans they are why people are looking into it because they are you know they they're looking into to get into a completely new world and maybe make gains out of it so i collected these 10 ways and and you know they are not exclusive ways there might be other ways and you can uh, go mu multiple of those ways but this, this is my list and you, you might disagree or you might agree, you might add a few more, but I will go through one by one through this. The first one is, I think what most people do is, is investing and just holding on. And I will go into details, so I just list right now, but that's what most people are familiar with. They buy Bitcoin or Ethereum and they hold on and they hope that the price will go up. Uh, there are other ways to make gains and that's with trading. So trading is uh, when you actually buy and sell regularly. That's my definition. So you can say, oh, but investing is like, I don't hold on forever, I will eventually sell. Trading is what I mean here is more looking into maybe daily or, or quite frequently selling and buying cryptocurrencies. The third way is when I go into financial applications and these are things like lending and borrowing, staking and farming and mostly in the decentralized space. And if you don't know what decentralized or centralized space is, I will talk a little bit more on that uh, slide. The fourth one is participate. It, well, if you're familiar with investing in shares, then you have probably heard IPOs. Well, in the crypto world, there are many variations. There are IDOs, IEOs, INOs, ICOs, probably a couple of others. I've heard of IAOs, IBOs. So pretty much an initial offering. You want to get in early before something, just when it's getting listed somewhere, uh, not, not when it's already established. Um, the fifth one is, of course, what a lot of you are interested in, in, in you know, doing gains in, in NFTs, virtual lands, virtual estates in the metaverse. So I don't have like an overall terminology. I put them into one category. Probably they could be separated into subcategories because they are different, but maybe we can cover that also in the questions. And number six, and I will cover only the first six today is starting a business. I think, you know, this is a business meetup group. And I think there is never been a better time to start a business in a crypto world than now. Uh, these places, despite the crypto market being a little bit bearish, I think it's, 
the whole industry is booming and it's in its infancy and it's still great time to get in. The other categories that I probably will not talk about because otherwise I will never finish and I will just talk on until it's like tomorrow. Uh, you can become an influencer, so that quite a few people made gains with becoming a social media influencer or key opinion leader. Uh, you can start your own, you, if you're a developer, if, you're, if you learn Solidity, I think um, Ablab mentioned before, uh, you're learning Solidity or Rust or some of the other languages, uh, whether you want to be part of a business or whether you just want to uh, hire your skills, it's a perfectly valid way to make gains in this world. Maybe not the rich to, you know, not, not the way to be a millionaire, but play to earn is getting popular, especially in uh, more poor countries where you can play games and earn tokens. So um, it's already very familiar, may, sorry, very popular with other games where people are hired to farm in like games uh, in Philippines, in, in Vietnam, but it's a perfectly valid way to, to get, collect some coins. And the last one, unfortunately, this world is a little bit still the Wild West, so please do not travel this road, is the scams and rug pulls. So unfortunately, I have been uh, suffering of a couple of rug pulls, and, and if you're in this world, nothing looks like it is. So you, we will have fake um, Vitalik Buterins coming up, offering you coins. Uh, if I'm getting famous, which i not not very likely, but there might be fake gabors popping up, trying to get you into some uh, shady investment schemes. So be, be very mindful. This world is unfortunately still full of sharks, full of rug pulls, scams, um, fake identities. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why there is a lot of call for regulation because um, yeah, it's still there and a lot of people make a lot of money with it. I, I might maybe, maybe talk about a few few later if you have time. So just checking because right now I don't see anyone. Is, is there any questions so far out of these ways or if you, do you think I missed out something really important? Hi, Gabor. Yep, um, go ahead, Kat. How do you know, I was gonna put it in the chat, but how or where do you find legitimate initial offerings or how do you know if it looks legit or? So usually there are uh, established, well, relatively established, there are still new uh, launch pads. So launch pads are um, the ones that have already run a few, they are probably more legit, the more user base they have. So uh, I will mention a few, uh, or I can send a couple of links as well, like scale swap, Polka starter, engine starter. So usually you are looking for launch pads that it's not their first project but they've had a few and, and they have been successful. Uh, also, you know, if they don't ask for any type of KYC, then they are probably a little bit dodgy. Like uh, usually they uh, use third party uh, companies to make sure that you are who you are. So you cannot use it for uh, your gains for money laundering. But yeah, it's, you will get probably if you are on Discord or Telegram, you will get random messaging messages. I usually just, report them and I don't care about them. But I get like 10, 20 a day. So Gabor, I will, I want to ask a question actually, um, probably can can speak in you know, most of people's you know, heart. Um, so because right now you see, we probably have over 10,000. I mean, big, small, known, unknown kind of different the coins listed. Um, are they really saying every single coin listed that they finished all the legal paperwork. What, I'm, what, I, what I want to know that in the really the legal entry, who is really regulated and who is really yeah. monitoring and who is going to basically uh, make sure that you know, they can be, if there are any scam and they can be traced, they can be and punished by, by that. So. Yeah, very, very few, pro like most of the small projects are registered in um, BVI, like British Virgin Islands, uh, or Gibraltar, or Malta. Uh, I think some of the bigger ones, like in Ireland. So it's, it's very, like, for example, in Australia, it's, it would be very, very difficult to register a business because um, I would need to, it's, it's not well regulated. 
And uh, if I have global customers, how do I deal with that? If I have to have financial services license, it's very difficult to get. It takes like you know $100,000, uh, which is about the same as in Canada. Um, it takes a year. So in, in this space, they, people, pe a lot of people say that, hey, I want to start up my business. Why do I start it up in, in my home country? I don't know Canadian regulations, but in Australia, it's very difficult. So a lot of them are setting it up in uh, you know, some of the offshore havens. Uh, but And yes, if you are like, we participated, um, I'm doing a side business, which I will mention where the partner was in BVI and they pretty much did a, not a rock pool, but they took the money and run. They are still there, but very, it's almost impossible to get uh, money back for the investors. So yeah, it's, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's still the wild west. Uh, all of those 10,000 projects, not all of them will survive. If you, if you know the uh, statistics for startups, probably, um, probably it would be very similar for this. I think a lot of them will disappear and will, uh, will you know, I invested in coins in back in 2017, they are all gone. It's, they went to zero. So, um, thank you. yeah, but, and, and that's one of the questions that I have here kind of, it's, it's a bit of a theoretical question. So the first row that most people do is, is investing. So they are there, hear from somewhere that, hey, have you heard of Cardano or Bitcoin or Ethereum? And they said, oh yeah, no, never. Uh, so why should I buy it? And they hear of a, you know, a central exchange, something like Coinbase or Binance um, or Kraken, and they create an account, they verify themselves and they, and they buy and then they hold on for the life, they hodl. So that's if you, if you probably are familiar with the hodl, it's, I think it was misspelled originally. Someone wanted to say that I just keep holding and it was hodling, but now we use it for hold on for dear life or just holding. So this is, I think for Bitcoin, the biggest use case is still that. People buy Bitcoin and they hold it, hoping that it will go to you know, 100,000 or a million dollars and then they will sell it and will be rich. So Bitcoin, you, you, you know, while you can buy maybe Tesla for it, but you cannot really buy anything. Uh, you cannot buy a lot of things. Um, maybe in the dark web, right? In the early days, but, but, but most people do, they buy and they hold on. Um, so how to pick a coin, whether you pick, uh, first of all, very important for me if that you understand what you pick. So if your friend called you that, hey, buy Shiba Inu because it's, it's, it has a very cute dog uh, in its logo and, and it will, you know, it's only 0, 0.000 something. And it, if it goes to $1, you will be a billionaire. Obviously don't, you need to have a little bit more understanding of that. Um, one of the two, if, you, if some of you are beginners, you might think that, oh, Bitcoin is expensive. It's like 40,000 40, US dollars. Maybe I buy something under a dollar. Yes, that doesn't necessarily mean that the actual coin or token is cheap because there is a price, but there is also a supply and a market capitalization. So if you look at a um, what, I, what I would suggest, if you are not familiar with these coins and tokens, go to CoinGecko. It's just CoinGecko.com. And they have a very similar to CoinMarketCap. I use CoinGecko, but it, two of them are pretty much the same. Maybe I show it on my screen. Uh, I just show CoinGecko. Sorry, CoinGecko.com. And it just lists all the coins by market capitalization. And what you can see here, you know, it's like, 840, sorry, 14 uh, billion, uh, sorry, million dollar, not, not, not billion yet. Uh, and it shows like, if you want to learn a specific, I, I pick a random one. I'm not recommending this. I'm just completely picking a random one. So if you heard from someone that, oh, Avalanche is a great token, then you might want to look at, okay, what, what is this Avalanche thing? And you might look at the info, like what is this avalanche? And it's a high throughput smart contract blockchain platform uh, with proof of stake. You might have no idea. Okay, maybe let's me check the website and you would go to the website and kind of learn more actually what that is that you're investing. So again, no financial advice. I picked avalanche completely random. I could have picked anything else, but make sure you understand what you're, what you're getting into. Also, very important. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Is, was there any question? Or? Yeah, I, I actually didn't have a question. I just wanted to kind of like add to it. In 2015, when I got involved, all you could do was just 
coin chase. Um, it's not until now to where you start understanding utilities and how things actually work to make it work for you in your industry. Um, one of my partners is actually on the phone. Her name is Bebo. Um, she's in the chat. Um, but we, we're we creating this group to, because when I first looked into the metaverse, I seen that the property was very expensive and, it, and it's expensive for a digital piece of property. And it's just like, for real, do I really want to spend this money on a digital piece of property? But once um, we start putting an idea of us as joining the group and joining as together as a group, it works. Um, so for me, like you, you hit it on the nose with, you look at these coins, you look at what the coins is doing, you look at what the service that the coins is doing and see if it works. Cause just like you, I bought a lot of coins that don't even exist no more. <laughs> and on some exchanges that doesn't even exist no more. So, um, and there's a lot of money loss, but you know, with this thing is trial and error. But because I decided, I looked at the whole picture of we're coming into a new web, which is almost like an even playing field for the big companies and the small guys. And you can create whatever industry that you want on this platform. Correct. Yep. Really good points. Uh, probably when we, when we get to that, uh, you know, like that area, the, the sorry, that slide, the uh, metaverse and and virtual lens. We could we could talk a little bit more about there as well because it's very important. There are so many of them, and how do you pick the one that is actually uh, the best for you? Um, yeah, and and what what I wanted to call out here with the with the strategy bit that I have friends who are um, you know they they got into crypto and and they you know they heard that I'm in it, so they started telling me about their decisions and they, they were just buying based on rumors. They watched a YouTube video, someone was shilling a coin, they bought it. They didn't have the, no idea. And then it dropped in price. So they quickly sold it. And of course, then it went up. So they bought into something else. So if, you, if you're just randomly by emotion, you, you pick coins by the name, by the look, it's, it's, you might get lucky, but long-term it wouldn't really work. So uh, in a, in a the bull market, yes, you can you can throw a dart and pick any coin and everything goes up, but uh, but you want to pick solid coins and it's very important that you have a strategy when when you actually want to sell. When do you take profit? So if you do you want to take profit? Let's say if you just invest in Bitcoin, and you buy buy it now for around forty thousand US, and when will you sell it? Will you sell ten percent when it goes to fifty, or or will you wait until it goes up until a hundred, or Will you wait until it goes up until five hundred thousand, or and the other way, if it drops to thirty, will you sell it or will you keep it? And so it's it's really important that you kind of have an initial thought of what you're going to do, even if you change your mind. It's okay to change your mind. So it might be that you you think that uh, you know this this strategy doesn't work. You change it. That's okay. But try to stay away from just emotional, like having emotions and buying coins left and right and selling them. Um, and the other other important bit, I think, again, just to see what my friend is doing, I, I would say don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Like if you are, uh, don't don't put your like yeah, I, I'm against gambling. Don't take out your from money from your mortgage and put it on a coin. It's it, it's too high risk in my opinion. So always what we call what we say in the crypto world, always do your own research. Uh, very important that you understand what you're buying. I will move on to some of the more exciting stuffs. So trading is, uh, I'm not very familiar with trading. I hope we have some day traders here who can correct me because it is very popular. But again, I, what I've seen, a lot of people don't know what they are doing. They, they draw a couple of lines and, and uh, or they watch a YouTube video and they think they understand it. They buy, sell. Um, but I think it's very important that uh, you understand your technical analysis. If you, most people don't do like, in, if you are in share market and doing trading, you obviously have technical analysis and fundamental an analysis when you look at, you know, how much assets that company has. Crypto is a little bit more difficult. So I think most of the, most of the people that I've seen trading, they do purely technical analysis. And what that means, they're looking at 
charts like in the, this one is an old chart on the on the screen, but they are looking at moving averages for that is let's say a moving average for 200 days and a moving average of 21 days. And when they go up or down, that's how they decide whether they buy or sell. There are a couple of lots of lots of other indicators, um, which uh, which I you know I tried, but I'm definitely not an expert of, so I wouldn't wouldn't talk about them. It's a perfectly valid way to earn, but again, very important, just like with the investing that you take out the emotions. It's like, oh, it went, it, it dropped a lot, so it must go up. It's, uh, if you have the rule set up that if it crosses your um, moving average of 200 days and then you will do a buy order, then do it. Don't, don't say that, oh, but not this time, or, or I will do it differently. Just follow the strategy and then you can change your strategy, but take out the emotions. Uh, similar with investing, but obviously on the daily level, you got to have a strategy. What is your stop loss? When do you, if it drops in value, when do you sell it? When do you stop the losses? Or, or are you, we have a saying in crypto world, if, if you are in minus 80%, everyone becomes a strategic, uh, sorry, a strategic holder, right? So if I, it happened to me that, uh, you know, I bought something for $1,000, it went down to 200. Now I'm keeping it. I should have sold it when it was 800 but now I will not sell it at 200 because I'm hoping that it will eventually crawl back to 1,000 one day. So I just hold. But yeah. Uh, and of course, as well, taking profits. Like uh, quite often people like don't take profits. And I, I think it's, um, if you believe in fiat currency still and you want to get gains, you want to probably take profits. Again, it's up to you. I have like I'm never planning to sell my little Bitcoin that I have only if it goes until very, very high. And one of the other things, which is obviously you all do because you are here and you are coming to this session is keep learning, uh, keep improving your strategy, keep learning about new things, try new things. Um, it's, again, it's the wild west. Things change very, very fast. So it's very important that you have a learning mindset, a growth mindset. And, I will touch on this, probably you are not as familiar with based on the introduction, you might have heard of it. In the meantime, because I don't see face, I don't see the faces, I can only see now Janet on the screen. Is there any question or is there any anything around trading or investing so far? I, I just wanna make a suggestion, anybody who's thinking about doing any day trading, look into a book called Elliott Wave. Um, it shows you theory on how to trade and when to trade and when to press and pull the trigger. Thanks for that. I'm, I'm afraid of trading. Uh, I, I tried to do it with CFDs back in uh, early days for Forex, and uh, I would need to be on in there all the time. It just takes uh, not easy. Thanks for the suggestion. If you, I think you might have, uh, if you can, if you can put in the uh, name, that would be great. I will move on because I know timing wise, I'm, I'm a little bit over time and uh, I have too many things. So uh, there are financial applications as well in crypto. In crypto. So Bitcoin was uh, purely for peer-to-peer -peer cash and then Ethereum came in with smart contracts where you could uh, on top of Ethereum, uh, on the Ethereum network, there were new apps created for just lending and borrowing and, and so on. So today uh, there is a huge world uh, within this world, like um, I will not go into different ecosystems, but Ethereum is probably the biggest um, network, but there are also layer twos, there are other networks and they all have their own applications built on them, on the decentralized applications. And one of the best way to make gains in this world is to look at the financial um, applications in this world. And things that you can do is, is um, Pretty much what you can do, sorry, I'm just trying to click on the screen. One of them is staking. And I mentioned before that there is centralized world and decentralized world. So when you start in your crypto journey, you're most likely ending up in the centralized world. You will find an exchange like Binance or find an exchange like Coinbase and you, and you buy a coin there. And uh, these are companies who provide you with a username and password, but they are the ones managing the funds, just like a bank. So you put your uh, U uh, Canadian dollar in and uh, they will give you tokens, but they are the ones managing the wallets. So if they are, um, if they are getting hacked 
and someone steals the money, they are well insured and they will just uh, take that insurance and put that money back on your account. You will not lose it. If you forget your password, you can call them that, hey, I forgot my password. They will verify you give back your password. This, this is centralized world. It has advantages similarly to banks, but also there is what we call the decentralized world where you actually are responsible for your own funds. So let's say if you have a, um, a wallet, like a, sorry, a, a hardware wallet, which something like this, I'm not sure if you can see the screen or not, probably not, but um, you are managing your own funds. Or if you have a wallet like on a web browser, like MetaMask, you are managing your own money. So the risk there is that you lose your private keys or you give it to someone else, you lost your money. You, you will, you, there is no one you can call up. If someone gets your private key, it's their money. So a lot more risk, but also you can do a lot more things, uh, especially in this uh, decentralized finance space. So first of all, staking, you can do both in an exchange. So you can just put your money and it, you can get an interest like a savings account, but you can do, also do it from your wallet. Uh, they, they are decentralized exchanges. You can also lend and borrow money. So, uh, and when I say money, not US dollar, let's say, you, but you can, you can lend your US dollar token, USDT, Tether, and you can, you can get some interest on it. So if you stake or lend your, for example, USDT tokens, quite often you can get 8% on them. And it's, they're relatively, um, maybe six, I don't know the current rates, uh, but definitely more than what you can get in a savings account. And just as close as uh, if you are doing it in a centralized exchange, probably just as secure. If you're doing it in decentralized, they can be hacked. So there might be some more risk, but still the returns are much higher than in a normal bank. The risk is higher. What you can do, and again, this would be a completely separate presentation, you can provide liquidity. So that means, for example, in, the, in this image, I have USDC, USDT there. You can provide tokens, both USDC and USDT tokens. And the way um, trading works in these places is not by an order book. They use a pool of money. So you put in 50, 50% 50 of a pair, like imagine USD, like I, I use another example, Ethereum and US dollar token, the Tether. You put in 50% Ethereum, you put in 50% of USDT, and that pool is used by others for trading, and you get a percentage of the trades. The risk there is that uh, if one of the prices go up, uh, you don't get all the gains from there because uh, your 50-50%, it will be still 50-50%, but you, it might be more Ethereum and less US dollar or the other way around. I will not go into that because, uh, but if you have something like a low risk, like this one, what I have on the screen, it's a USDC, USDT pool, and you will have, like, they are, they are pretty much always $1, and you would get $8 uh, on, on that currently. This is, I think, from two days ago. You can also do yield farming, which uh, might provide, they, they might reel you in that, oh, 300% return. Uh, which is true, but they don't give it in US dollar token. They give that uh, in, your, in their own platform token. So let's say this particular one would give the token in a BAO token and uh, you would earn BAO. However, BAO might drop in price and your 300% might sound great, but in reality, it might be, uh, you might be losing money. All right, one of the exciting topics is uh, these IXOs. I just call them IXOs, but there are so many of them. So there is uh, IDOs, which is an initial decentralized exchange offering. There is IEO, which is uh, initial exchange offering. There is INO, which is initial NFT offering. Back in 2017, ICOs, initial coin offerings were big. So uh, without the definition, this is an example right now, for example, I, again, just took one random. Uh, this is, I took this from RedKite. Um, they are like a platform where they, you can participate in an IDO. So this is before the token is actually, so Metaron IDO, this, uh, I think they have the token run, I'm not, or MRUN. They are not available on an exchange yet. They are probably not, they are definitely not listed on CoinGecko. 
So this will, this is when you can buy in a certain low price and you can participate in it. Usually what they ask is that you own, if they, they launch on launch pads, like RedKite is a launch pad, ScaleSwap is a launch, uh, launch pad, you have to own a certain number of their tokens to participate in these deals. And um, before you start doing that, this is a little bit more advanced topic. What you want, to, you want to be familiar with these, these terminology. TGE is for token generation event, is when they generate the actual tokens. You usually don't get everything up front. So if you go to the market, like you go and want to buy Bitcoin, you, you can, you know, you put in $100 and you put, you get uh, value for $100. When you participate in an IDO or, or INO, you usually get only like, let's say 10% of the tokens at that stage. And then you might have a cliff period for two months, you might not get anything. And then the rest of it, you might get it monthly. That's called vesting. So a bit more advanced. If it's too quick right now, uh, I will have my Twitter. Uh, you, you can look for my name, Gabor Deveni. I can be found. I'm in Australia. So write me a LinkedIn message or find me on Twitter. I'm happy to share more of this. I also have a YouTube channel where I talk a little bit more detailed about this. But if you have any question, I'm always ready to help. Um, and there is one thing that I wanted to put up here, which is a company that I help. That's why I'm, this, this is the self-advertisement. Sorry, Marilyn, I, I do, the, did a, do a little bit of pitch for myself. Uh, there are actually even one earlier run before it goes to um, an IDO or an INO. It's event for venture capitalists. So venture capitalist companies, they are the ones who are getting in strategic round uh, or, or very early. So what they people found out that we could crowdfund these things. So we could set up like pool VCs and we can participate even in earlier runs than an IDO. Uh, and, and I'm helping this Shugo Ventures, uh, which has somewhat stricter vesting periods. So usually it can happen that, you know, at the IDO, you get 10% of the coins. Pool VCs or VCs, they, they might not get anything at the token generation event because they believe in long-term and they might get their first tokens two months after they uh, they bought in. Boyd, I think I, you have your question. You have a question. Yeah. Uh, hi. I've got a question. Um, are this, can you do this through an exchange or through the, you know, the institution offering this? How does that work? Yeah. So, so IDEO is, uh, is on a decentralized exchange. So you cannot, uh, you cannot run through an established exchange. So if I go to, again, just bringing up one, um, let's say, sorry, I put in red kite because I saved. So this one, sorry, I will not switch network, but usually you have to, like it's through that platform. So red kite, I don't know if they are a big company or not big company, but they have community sales and you have to register and you might get lucky and get, sorry, selected. I will not do any of this. So it's through this, but big exchanges, no, Binance doesn't do, they, they might introduce a new coin. Like if you, if you go to Binance and they introduce a new coin, but by that time, that coin or token that has been existing. There are others like uh, Maxi, uh, which, um, which quite often they do initial platform offerings, sorry, in initial, uh, not platform offerings, sorry, initial exchange offerings, also gate.io. So they are smaller centralized exchanges, similar to Binance or similar to uh, Kraken or Coinbase, but they are a lot smaller. And they quite often have this, like uh, they, they, for example, yeah, gate.io, these are all initial exchange offerings. So this is a little bit more, a little bit less risk than, uh, for example, what you do with um, what you what you do here at uh, Redkite or the IDOs. IDOs, it's your wallet. You manage the whole thing. If you connect to a fake site, you lose all your money. So let's say if I, you know, you go to Redkite, but you put in uh, there. There are lots of fake websites. So uh, what I what I'm trying to say, uh, because of the Wild West, I'm sure there are fake Redkite websites. And if you accidentally click on the wrong link, it will look exactly like the real one, but they will take your wallet ID and you will never see your money. IEOs, when it's an exchange, like a centralized exchange, it's more safe. Um, 
yeah, so that would be probably what you want to, if you're experienced, IDOs are, there are plenty of IDOs, not a lot of IEOs, um, but more risk if you, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Like if this is the first time, I would be very, very careful. When I participated in my first, I know I read all the instructions from the three different sources, made sure that I didn't click on uh, any private message um, that had a website link or a token address. It's a bit more advanced. Yeah, but can any anybody participate or you have to be you know, yeah to participate accredited you have to be accredited yeah. or something uh, for ideos yes so ideos so these exchanges like red kai scale swap polka starter they are accredited businesses and they run kyc on you so you cannot participate on a sale if they don't know who you are they they are accredited businesses but you you don't have to be Oh, you don't like have I, to be accredited? Like to, 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 inve to, to, to invest? invest to yeah. invest, no, no, no. To invest, you can. All you need, they will check you for who you are. And that's that's for, again, money laundering, anti-money laundering and fraud purposes. So you will have to have like driving driver's license. You have to prove who you are to them, to these platforms. But uh, you can participate. Uh, and yeah, if you have a wallet, like, a, like MetaMask, and you are you are eligible to participate. So in this case, like I, again, just speaking red kite, I never participated in a red kite sale, but I would have to own their tokens so I can participate in their IDO. So it's almost like I have to buy my way in. You might get lucky, like in the community sales, you it's a lottery, and if you share stuff, you you might get lucky. You still have to do the KYC, but uh, the yeah, it's if you can see. Like in this particular one, they raised two thousand dollars for the community. So if I have zero token, I'm completely new. I might have a chance that I get in, but it's very, very low chance. If I own their tokens, I would get a bigger pool, and it would be more likely that I I can participate in it. Merlin, I'm probably well behind with time, so uh, it's we have how much time we have, Merlin? Just to um, Five more minutes, or yeah, no worry. Go ahead. I, I it's because really, what you're what you're uh, sharing tonight is very consistent and very important. So I wouldn't mind and unless you know. I mean, for the rest of them, if you have time, you have stuff to do, just by all means. And I want you to finish this session so then we can have all you know the recordings and okay. No worries. Go ahead. No worries. Yeah, worry. Take however long right. you want. All right, I, I have someone coming uh, in in about five minutes, but I can tell them that they just wait for me. Um, yeah, so, so the, another way to, to main gains, and I think a lot of you probably know more about this than me, I, I just put it into one category, the NFTs, virtual lens, and digital wearables, and, and, um, and metaverse. So obviously, 2021, there was a huge hype around this. Everyone got into NFTs, and people like, you know, I mean, if you look at uh, the, the board apes, I mean, I don't even know what is the floor price, but it's pretty crazy. Uh, there is a little bit of disillusion from what I saw in the market, obviously, because there are more and more people about, uh, like, oh, what is this? And I like, what, what can you use this JPEG for? Oh, for nothing. Like, why, why did I buy it? And the amount of messages I'm getting for, you know, and these, these kind of copycats of um, these apes are cheaper versions and, and on different networks. Um, and there are so many of them. And how do you know which one is valuable, which one is not valuable? It's, it's, it's so hard. Um, I mean, fundamentally, they are all the same. They are like 10,000 automatically generated images. Um, and, and there are so many of those. So how do you know which one is valuable, which one is not? But definitely flipping NFTs can be, probably can be still profitable. I'm not an expert on it. I, I bought CryptoKitties back in the days and probably uh, I, the price I would sell them now, uh, they wouldn't cover the gas fee. So. Uh, probably not a good investment and not the best in there. But yeah, I have a few NFTs. Um, but what you need to understand when it comes to the technology about non-fungible tokens, it's not just monkey JPEGs on Web 3.0. You can do a lot more things. You can you can have uh, you know ownership of a virtual estate, but you can also prove of, you can use it as a as if you want to do it as a business with your local council. It can be used for a proof of ownership of a real world asset on the blockchain. 
So right now, I don't know how it is in Canada. If you want to see who is the owner of a real property, probably it's in a central database somewhere. You could put it on a, a decentralized database as well as an NFT. Um, but yeah, of course you have the digital world assets as well. So if you go into a metaverse, okay, I, I, sh I share you another one, for example, Somnium. Somnium is a completely VR world and everything is an NFT there. And uh, they, they have cars as NFTs in that world. They have buildings and lands as NFTs. They have wearables and NFTs. I mean, you know, Decentraland as well. Decentraland is not, um, again, Decentraland is not um, VR, but, um, but yeah, everything is wearable. So I have, I have my own, uh, not with, uh, sorry, I will move around this. I might just change my, uh, sorry, everyone will see my account address is not very happy. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, okay, network misfortune detected. I will not play now, but yeah, I have my wearables in Decentraland or if you go into Somnium, um, that's a completely VR world. Again, uh, that you, everything, maybe I just look for images here that I can show. They're not, this is not the one, Somnium space, completely open VR world where you can go in, put, put your Oculus Quest on, connect to your computer and, uh, and participate there. And, and uh, it's all in virtual reality. You can build your own stuff. You can have your own um, lands and like you can have races with those NFT boats. So pl plenty, of, plenty of things. There are another one maybe I show, Next Earth. Next Earth, you can, you can buy virtual lands. So I might just go and look for uh, Niagara Falls, uh, not that, this one. And um, the good one, the good it's one. A, it's, it's a very good one, right? Yeah, and the and I might, Niagara Falls, the real one. The real one, yeah. So there, there are people already bought some properties, but let's say if I want to buy that, that particular, it would, or someone bought that one pixel there, I don't know why. This one would be a little bit expensive, right? Two thousand. Uh, they might be very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wow, price per tile is one USDT, crazy. It was 0 0.1 when I started, it went already 10 times the price. All right, but even, and you know, what is this? This is kind of like a Google Maps on, uh, with a grid on it. It's, they use not Google Maps, they use something else. But what people started doing is, is pretty crazy. They started like using, maybe I go to Hong Kong here for a, for a moment. And if I go into Hong Kong, people started to using, buying the, the sea area for, um, for to sell it as advertisement. So uh, like they have their own pixels and land art that they can sell as an NFT. But as far as I know, people starting to buying uh, these things as, and they not selling it, but they want to, they want to sell it as advertisement. So people are, who are, yeah, it's uh, some of them, they are just, you know, self, uh, self promotion at this stage, but I know that I'm in this forum, so I know people buy it because they want to sell them later on. Uh, Metamol is a new one, uh, a new project. Again, I think Blocktopia is very similar. They set up a mall where you can, uh, where you can, in a virtual shopping mall, you can have your own um, own lands, and you can buy. Uh, you know, in that map, you will be able to have your own cabin or chateau or chalet, like virtual real estate, and they have their own token as well so they have they have lands and they have uh, their own token as well so very very a lot of i mean you know some of you mentioned uh, the projects that you're part of so will all of them survive which one will be the new uh, will meta be the new facebook or will be something else don't know don't know which one will die and which one will survive i think it's all about adoption how many users you can you can onboard um it's a lot of marketing. Um, a lot of them, you know, might be better. I mean, back in the back in the social media days, Facebook was not the best social media platform. I mean, you you use probably MySpace. I, I use even the Hungarian version of it. They all disappeared or or you know not relevant. A lot of these metaverse projects will probably die off without enough users, but there will be a few that will stay. And just to cover quickly my last slide. Uh, there is not, I, I don't think there is a better time than now to start a business, maybe, you know, yesterday or the day before, but 
there are so many things I think Ebla mentioned as well. It's, it's whatever your business is, there might be a valid uh, reason to move it to or add blockchain to it. Like if you're a real estate agent, you know, there might be uh, you know, virtual real estate. You might set up your own consultancy. You might set up a new, you might start a new, completely new token. It's very easy to create a new token. I mean, a meme token, yeah, like you could do it. You can just copy an existing one and it can be ready in 15 minutes. Obviously, it might not be the new Dogecoin or the new Shiba Inu because you need the community around it. And if you don't have 50 to 100,000 people in your community, then you're probably considered a small. You can set up your own DAO. Uh, I mean, if you look at Animoca brands, Animoca brands is a huge business and you, you, you might not have heard their name. They own Sandbox. They, they have ownership, I think, in, uh, maybe in the central land. I'm not sure. It's a huge company. They are, they are investing left and right into big gaming projects. If you hear Animoca brands, they are like a huge company now. But if you start a business, don't just start another meme coin. Uh, don't just say, I mean, I could start Gabor coin now. I will not do that. But you want to solve a real problem. So creating an, another Ape NFT project, yeah, very easy. You could, do, you could get it done in one day easily. You just probably need to have a, a little bit of graphic design skills. But, uh, but will you get people buying it? Probably not so much. You want to solve a real problem. So as a summary for today, and I will probably sh stop sharing them so we can, I can see you and talk a little bit more, is that this world is still in its infancy. It is the Wild West. It's not very regulated. So look, when, when you are, especially when you're not just buying stuff on an exchange, make sure you you, you know, be responsible, do your own research. Don't, don't click just on anything. Uh, you can do, you can walk multiple of these ways. Like you can invest, you can trade NFTs, you can buy into virtual lands, you can uh, do all of this stuff. You can still yield farm, uh, but yeah, always do your own research. And if you follow me on Twitter, it's just dev test repeat, or look for Gab or Dave any, um, or add me on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to talk about these topics. And uh, obviously, I'm not the expert. I mean, AbLab has been there for longer than I am. So maybe you could be the next speaker. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to, uh, pretty much these are was the six ways. I will not talk about the rest because I will never finish. And now I finally, I can see you. So I'm happy. Uh, do you have any particular Disagreement, agreement, or question? I have a question. Uh, I'm sorry if my uh, the background is a bit noisy. Um, so I'm a complete beginner in this space. Uh, so what would you suggest to do? Like to explore all the websites you shared or some boats or I don't know. What would you recommend? Yeah, if you are completely new, I would probably start with centralized exchanges before you start your own creating your own wallet. But um, uh, there are like good YouTube channels and don't look for the ones that says that they will give you 100x return on your and buy this coin. Uh, there are a couple of good ones, I would say. Um, maybe I just quickly type in the name of a few that I like. So there is one called Whiteboard Crypto, which uh, I think is good. There is one good about uh, decentralized finance called Finematic, so it's more financial ones. I would probably look at Coin Bureau. All right, I will mistype this. How do you write Coin Bureau? I already shared the link to that. I, I, share, oh, I, I actually went to go and find that as you went to go and search things. Great. I knew that awesome. one, that's my go-to. Yeah, Co Coin Bureau is a good one. So yeah, I would say go, go to Coin Bureau first. They, they, he's pretty good. Um, and just you know, start experimenting. Try to create your your own wallet first. Like go download the Meta MetaMask um, extension and um, and but don't, make sure that you don't give the private key to anyone because at the moment you will get fake websites and they will ask you for hey what is your what is your private key or your mnemonic or uh, don't don't never give it out. Like don't share it on your screen. I will not do that. Yeah, the one that I you sell my screen and will be on the recording is my public address. You can send me money, but uh, you, cannot, you cannot take it. Uh, yeah, I would say start there and then, then look, at, look at maybe the decentralized world later.
have your own wallet and then go to a website like Uniswap and just uh, look if you can trade there. Yeah, I, I will not show that because I would show my balances and stuff. But it's transparent by everyone can, if you know my wallet address, you know exactly how much money I have. Yeah, but they wouldn't know it is, it's your money. Nobody's gonna know it's your money. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. an address, so. <laughs> it's an address, right, it's an address. Yeah, and the, yeah, yeah, that's right. Can I ask a question? I, I came a bit late. Uh, can you can you just tell me about um, what you do? What's your background? How oh, did you I, I actually actually I never introduced myself really. I mean, I said that I'm from Hungary originally, but live in Australia. I'm I'm an actually a, a full time. I'm working for a bank, and uh, I'm doing kind of a side job. So I'm I'm working as an advisor for a uh, well. That's how I know Madeline and Joe for UTU. So UTU is, uh, well, it was a social media app. Now I think our focus is shifting more into the, uh, DAOs and, and providing DAO solutions. So um, working there uh, as an advisor, I also uh, do uh, part of helping out a, a pool venture capitalist company in the crypto space. So, but uh, yeah, mainly I'm working in IT. I've been always working in IT. So that's what I studied, um, but I'm too, bad to be a programmer. So I, I try to learn Solidity and try to learn some of these languages and I can write very, very basic stuff, but uh, yeah, not I'm not very good at that. Yeah, but working in IT. Thanks. So, and been with crypto, yeah, started investing back in 2017 and I participated in a couple of ICOs. Uh, and that's how I learned and uh, yeah, lost, of, lost most of that money. I think in this, in this industry, whoever paid that in the lessons will learn hard. <laughs> yeah, you guys tonight are learning what Gabor paid a heavy price for, right? You guys are gaining for free the knowledge that, that came very costly to Gabor. I, I, I have one more slide maybe let me let me share my screen for a moment again just to ahead, just to please, show that. Um, so this is this is just from my slide. So I just put in a couple of like if, even if you are participating you you go into YouTube and you see these things and they show Elon Musk here and they say if you send you know one Bitcoin I will send you back 10. And you have plenty of these still as paid advertisements on YouTube. You get the fake Elon Musk tweeting. I mean, look at this Elon Musk with an Elon Musk logo. Of course, you can see it's not the real one, but it replies. It's actually replying to Elon Musk. Again, send Ethereum here and I will send you back. On Discord, you get plenty of, uh, sorry, pretty girls sending you messages about cryptocurrencies and they want to learn about it. And, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 are scams. In Polygarden, I tried to do that. I put in like $10. I lost all of it because I put in $10. The next day, they disappeared with the $10 because I didn't check, you know, that they, they were considered a high risk. On Telegram, I'm getting messages for, I mean, GooseFX is a perfectly valid project. They, they were running, they, they were starting on PancakeSwap, but a couple of hours before, people pretending to be GooseFX, sending messages that, hey, you can already trade on Pancake already. Just use this URL which is their fake token that looks exactly like the real one, but it's not the real one. So, uh, and, and oh my gosh, they even have beware of scammers. And this is a message from a scammer, right? And I got a couple of these, but all of the projects. So yeah, I'm just picking one here. GooseFX is a perfectly valid project, but there are fake versions of them. So you gotta, gotta know what you're doing. It's, it's a wild west. Don't wanna scare off anyone, but just. Thank you. 